When approaching a Class Charlie airport, start by tuning in the Automatic Terminal Information Service, or ATIS, using the frequency shown on the chart. Write down the code letter associated with the update that you receive because you'll be giving that information to air traffic control when you check in. Make the initial contact with ATC when you're 20 miles out, or as soon as practical if you're already closer than that. I like to start the conversation by saying, Columbus Approach Skyhawk 80254 VFR request. This gives the controller time to finish up any work he may be doing on other frequencies or phone lines, and give me his full attention so he's not overwhelmed by a whole bunch of random information coming from a new airplane all at once. And as a side note, when the frequency is busy, some controllers prefer if you omit the facility name and simply address them as approach. When the controller is ready, he'll usually say, Skyhawk 80254, Columbus Approach, say request. The next reply should include the aircraft tail number, the type, the position, and what's being requested. So, for example, Skyhawk 80254, 20 miles southwest of Dayton International at 3500 with information Foxtrot, request pattern work. You can also request other things like to transit the airspace or get flight following, but for this video we're just going to focus on a practice training flight into a Class Charlie airport. The next thing you can expect to hear is Skyhawk 80254, Squawk 3456 and ident. Read this number back and enter it into your transponder. Then press the ident button to make yourself more visible on the air traffic controller's screen. Technically, you can enter the Charlie airspace as soon as the controller has addressed you by tail number, but it's good manners to wait for an instruction so you don't interfere with the flow of traffic that's already been sequenced. Your first instruction will usually be something like, Skyhawk 80254, radar contact 20 miles southwest of Dayton, turn left heading 360, descend and maintain 3000, and to that you would reply, left heading 360, descend 3000, 80254. At this point, what the controller is doing is sequencing you in with the other traffic that's going in and out of the airport. Your job is to read back and comply with any directions that he gives you. For example, the controller might say proceed direct Dayton if there's no other traffic in the area, or if there is, he'll give you instructions to work you in. Whatever you're told to do, just read it back and do it, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask for clarification. The worst thing you can do is read back an instruction and then not follow it. Remember that you only have to read back the key elements of instructions that you're given. So if the controller decides to give you a full weather report on frequency, or tell you that another aircraft is at your 3 o'clock climbing from 4,000 to 6,000 westbound, you don't have to read all that information back. In the first case, you can just respond with your tail number and the altimeter setting, and in the second case, you can say traffic in sight or looking for traffic. Keep in mind, though, that if you say traffic in sight, the next thing you're going to hear is maintain visual separation, and that means that you're likely to not get any more updates on the position of that traffic. Also, you should understand that even though approach controllers often provide advisory traffic notices, they do not issue clearances and are not providing separation services to pilots flying under visual flight rules. It is still 100% your responsibility to look out the window and avoid other aircraft in and around Class Charlie airspace. Sometimes the controller will ask you questions if not everything made it through in the initial contact call. For example, you might hear, say type of aircraft, to which you would just reply Cessna 172. Or you may be asked to say intentions after landing. Common answers to that are, I'd like to stay in the pattern, I'd like to do a touch and go and depart to the north, or simply full stop. If you're doing a touch and go, you might also be asked for your on-course heading after departure, or given a specific set of departure instructions. This is the controller planning ahead to avoid traffic conflicts on your way out. It's important to respond to ATC communications quickly because they can't use the frequency to talk to anyone else until they get your read back. So if you're ever asked a question you don't know the answer to, say stand by to give yourself some time to think. A common example of this is when they give you significant information and then ask you to say intentions. At some point the controller is going to say contact the tower. When that happens you simply reply switching to tower and from that point forward, the flight follows the same procedures you would use for any other towered airport. On the way back out, the tower is going to say, contact departure. When that happens, you use the same frequency that you used to get in, unless the tower gave you a different frequency, and start your contact with, departure, Skyhawk 80254 off Dayton. Columbus is then going to vector you out of the airspace, and will eventually let you go with, Skyhawk 80254, radar services terminated, squawk VFR, frequency change approved. At this point, you put 1200 into your transponder and read back Squawk VFR 80254. Now you are no longer in contact with air traffic control.